Shalom, we're going to do the canting of the Amir. Baruch Atah Yehua Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Atsher Kitshanu B'mitzvotah V'itzivanu Al Safirat HaOmer Ayom Yom Chamesh Blessed are you, Yehua, who are king of the universe, who has commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day number five. Amen. Praise you, Abba Yehua. And so we continue with our reading of the book of Jeremiah, Yeremiahu, as we continue to see what the Father is wanting to reveal to us in this time, as more and more the deeper we go, the more the more profound it becomes in Father really speaking up. It's chapter after chapter that he continues about the same thing. So let us begin. And we are in Jeremiah chapter 7 tonight. The word that came to Yeremiah from Yahuwah saying, Stand in the gate of the house of Yahuwah, and you shall proclaim there this word, and shall say, Hear the word of Yahuwah, all you of Yehuda, who enter in at these gates to bow before Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the Allure of Israel, Make your ways and your deeds good, then I let you dwell in this place. Do not trust in these false words, saying, This is the heckle of Yahuwah, the heckle of Yahuwah, the heckle of Yahuwah. For if you truly make your ways and your deeds good, if you truly do right ruling between a man and his neighbor. So you see, yeah, we see the situation. Yeah, we see that they are saying, It's the temple of the Yahuwah, it's the temple of Yahuwah, it's the heckle of Yahuwah. And Many people think that just because they go to church on a Sunday and they do their good deeds by going to church on a Sunday, it makes them a good person. You can sit in the church all you like and you can go listen to the message all you like, but if you're not putting into practice the ways of the Father, then we are no different to these Israelites. That also says that they are going to the heckle of Yahuwah. They're going through the gates. They're going to bow themselves. They're going to pay. They're going to do service to him there. But yet, at the end of the day, what does he say? If you truly do right ruling between a man and his neighbor. And so, how is our behavior? This is already going to show us that you can go and do all your lip service to the Father. But what is the behavior? Let's see. If you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, or walk after other mighty ones to your own evil, then I shall let you dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. So you see, the Father wants us to be able to follow in his ways. He wants us to be able to be people that are not just reading the Torah, that are not just knowing all the scriptures in our mind. Like we will go to church and take our Bible and we listen to what the pastor says and sit there and get a good message and say, Amen. And then we come out of there, we put down that Bible and then how do we behave? Because at the end of the day, this is exactly what happens even in, the, in Eretz Israel. You will see, oh my goodness, if you live there, then you understand, especially when you are there and you walk the streets. And then you see these serious, observant Jews that are really Torah Jews with their tzitzits and everything. And they come out of the synagogue. And no sooner do they come out of the synagogue, then how do they go with their behavior? My goodness, it gets so bad at the time of the feasts that there's even such a rebellious spirit that is there between the alcohol, between the smoking, between everything that goes on. It is quite hectic because... There's no crucifixion of the flesh. There's outward manifestations of what we do, but not a crucifixion of the flesh. Not a flesh that must be submitted to the way of Yahuwah. Whatever my flesh wants to do, it does. And so we continue in verse 8. See, you are trusting in false words which do not profit, stealing, murdering, committing adultery, swearing falsely, burning incense to bowl and walking after other mighty ones you have not known. And so you see, this is what the Father is speaking up against his own chosen people. These were his people that were still going to the temple, still offering sacrifices at the temple, 
But what are they busy doing? And this is why he's speaking up against us. This is why he's speaking up against us. Why? Because we might do all these things for the Father in our outward manifestations, but what is dwelling within our hearts? And you come and stood before me in the house, which is called by my name, and said, we have been delivered in order to do all these abominations. So you see, we come, we receive your shoe as our Messiah. And he has delivered us. But yet at the end of the day, he didn't deliver us and save us so that we continue in our wicked, evil, fleshly ways. And continue in our religious systems. He came to be able to deliver us so that we may now follow the ways of Abba Yahuwah. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers? Now, have we heard that? What did Yahushua do? Did Yahushua not do the exact same thing? said, my father's house has become a den of robbers. Did he not take a whip and start to whip the people and overthrow their money changes? Has anything changed today? The house of Yahuwah has become a place of where it is about money. And it's about entertainment. And it's about we coming there for the entertainment. Is it really about coming and serving Abba Father? And so he says, has this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Look, I, even I myself have seen it, declares Yahuwah. So you see, the Father sees what goes on in a lot of these churches. He sees. But go now to my place in Shiloh, where I set my name at, at the first, and see what I did to it because of the evil of my people Israel. Now remember, Shiloh was the very place that for more than 300 years, the tabernacle dwelt in Shiloh. But what happened with Ichabod? Father removed his presence. Why? Because the priesthood became corrupt. What was um, uh, uh, the priest? Oh, what was his name? Uh, the, 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 he was the high priest. And at that time, it was the priest that was then, oh, I can't even remember what his name is. But anyway, his sons was doing wickedness, was doing absolute wickedness in the eyes of the father. And that's why the father then rose up Samuel. So father rose up Samuel because he knew that the actual, what was his name? Eli. Oh, yes, Eli. Eli, the priest Eli. His sons were doing wicked in the eyes of the father. They were stealing and they were using the money for themselves and they were then doing the prostitution. It was just abomination before the father. And so what did father do? He rose up another priest. He rose up Samuel. And so at the end of the day, we must understand what happened then with Eli. Eli fell over and died. And Eli's sons died when he got the report that his sons were dead. What did they do? They took the Ark of the Covenant into battle. How dare they have taken the Ark of the, the Covenant out of the house of Yahuwah and took it with them into battle? And then the Ark was taken. The Ark was confiscated basically from them. And then the Father's presence left the temple, left the tabernacle. And so that is why he's speaking about Shiloh. Because you know what? There's many churches that the Father's presence is no longer there. There's many churches that might give all the worship to the Father, but yet in the, in everything is about flesh being on the throne. And so the Father's presence is no longer there. And now because you have done all these works, declares Yahuwah, and I spoke to you, rousing up early and speaking, but you did not hear, and I called you, but you did not answer. I shall also do this, do this, do to this house which is called by my name in which you trust and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers as I did to Shiloh. So what is he saying? I'm going to allow the house that has been called by my name to be destroyed. And this is when the temple was then destroyed in the time of Jeremiah. And I shall cast you out of my presence and I, as I cast out all your brothers, all the seed of Ephraim. 
So understand, because of the fact that we continue to not go the Father's way and be obedient to the Father, He removes His presence. Now there's nothing worse than, imagine, there's nothing worse than the Father's presence leaving us because we will continue in our sinful, wicked ways. And you, do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or pray for them, nor make intercession to me, for I do not hear you. Now how sad is that? That what is the Father saying to Jeremiah? I'm not going to listen to your intercession prayer being made for them because I'm going to bring judgment on these people. Do you not see what they are doing in the cities of Yehuda, in the streets of Jerusalem? The children are gathering wood, the fathers are lighting the fire, and the women are kneading their dough to make cakes for the sovereigns of the heavens and to pour out drink offerings to other mighty ones to provoke me. And so this is now, if you take the religion of the Catholic Church at this point in time, who do they, they worship? They worship the same queens of heaven, the queen of heaven, where they go and they do all their offerings and everything to the queen of heaven. And so if we think that we are done with our idolatry, the idolatry comes in all different ways. It is me they are provoking, declares Yahuwah. It is not themselves unto the shame of their own faces. Therefore, thus said the Master Yahuwah, See, my displeasure and my wrath is poured out on this place, on man, on beast, on trees of the field, and on fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and not be quenched. And so we must understand, we cannot continue to provoke the Father the way that we do in our sinful ways and continue to demand and command that he is to be able to answer and hear our cry and we do not want to repent and turn from our wicked ways. Because this is a fallacy that we keep, that we, if we still think that we can continue in our sinful wicked ways and the Father is not going to bring judgment, we are living in our own dream world. Thus says Yahuwah, the hosts of Elua, of Israel, add your ascending offerings to your slaughterings and meat and eat meat. For I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim about matters of ascending offerings and slaughterings. So you see, this is a people now that want to continue to give him all their slaughter offerings and their ascending offerings, but they will not turn from their wicked ways. So this is exactly what we do. We will continue to be able to think that we can worship the Father, but yet at the end of the day, we don't want to turn from our wicked ways. When the Father says, this is the way, walk you in it, and the Father tries to bring correction, and the Father is now in this day and age, bringing the people back to his ways and the people want to rebel and say, I don't want to go this way. I don't want the way of Torah. So now we will read and he says, but this word, I did command them saying. So this is the word that he did command us saying. Obey my voice and I shall be your lure and you shall be my people and you will walk in all the ways that I have commanded you so that it will be well with you. So, you know, if we go look, and we're going to go look at two scriptures, I just want to bring up two scriptures here. Let's go look at Exodus chapter 19, because in Exodus chapter 19 is when the covenant was given, and the covenant was given to a people. And in Exodus chapter 19, um, verses 5, what does he say? He says, and now, if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, and you shall be to me a reign of priests and a set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. So you see, this is the Father's desire. The Father wants us to diligently obey his voice. The Father wants us to be able to guard his covenant and he wants to be able to have for himself a treasured possession above all the peoples. All the people of the earth is his, but he wants 
What is he looking for? A reign of priests, a set apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And why are we reading this book of Jeremiah and going deep in this book of Jeremiah? Because we are preparing ourselves in these next 50 days to be able to then come before the Father at Mount Sinai to be able to be given the ketubah, to be able to be given this covenant. And we must be able to stand before the Father and say, this is what I choose, Father. I choose to be able to follow you. And so then we're going to just look at one other scripture in John 3, verse 36. In John 3, verse 36, listen to what Yeshua speaks, because now many people say, yes, but that is the foundational covenant. He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life, but he who does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of the Lua remains on him. So make a note of this verse in your Bible today. Because you see, many people think, all I need to do is be saved. Call out on the name of Yeshua and you shall be saved. But what does he say? He says, who believes in, in the Son possesses everlasting life. But he who does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of a lure remains on him. So you see, it is the Shama of the obedience. Walk as he walked. Follow what he followed. You can't say that you, you, you obey the son. Yet at the end of the day, the son says that, you know, we ought to be able to love him. If you say that you love me, you will obey my commands. And you are to walk as he walked. And he kept the commands. And he kept the Father's ways. And that is why we look at one more scripture in Revelation chapter 22 verses 14. Right at the end of the book. And what does it say? Blessed are those doing his commandments so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life. So you're not going to eat from that tree of life if you are not doing his commandments. And to enter through the gates into the city. So you see, these are the things that we must understand what he's saying. So in Jeremiah, verse 23, chapter 7, verse 23 says, But this word I did command them, saying, Obey my voice, and I shall be your law, and you be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, so that it be well with you. But they did not obey or incline their ear, but walked in the counsels, in the stubbornness of their evil heart and went backwards and not forwards. So you see, they walked in the counsel, in the stubbornness of their own evil hearts and went backwards and not forwards. So you see, are we going forwards in the things of the Father? Are we going forwards in wanting to be obedient to Him? Or what are we doing? Are we being rebellious in saying, I don't want to do this like this. I don't want to do this like that. So if we have a look in Genesis chapter 6, and this is what he says in verse 5, And Yahuwah saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And that is why in verse 7 he says, Verse 6, he says, And Yahuwah was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And Yahuwah said, I'm going to wipe off man whom I have created from the face and of, of the ground, both man and beast, creeping creatures and birds of the heaven, for I am sorry that I made them. And so we must understand, this is what the Father is speaking. He's saying, they want to continue to be stubborn and they continued their evil following their evil hearts and they went backwards and not forwards from the day that your fathers came out of the land of Mitzrayim until this day I have even sent to you all my servants the prophets daily raising up early and sending them 
How many of the little prophets are there? How many of the prophets? He sent Isaiah. He sent Jeremiah. He sent Ezekiel. He sent Micah. He sent Hosea. He sent uh, Zephaniah. He sent how many? Malachi. He sent all these prophets. And what did they do? They killed the prophets. They didn't listen to the prophets. They rebelled against the prophets. And all the prophets kept telling them was, repent, repent, come back to the Father. But what do they do? They don't want to listen. They want to go their own way. Because why? They did not obey me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did, they did evil more than their fathers. So you see, is this where we are today? We are doing even more evil than our fathers because our fathers still had a little bit of um, reverence, fear of Yahuwah. Now, people don't fear Yahuwah at all. They do what they want and they go where they want and they, they don't fear him at all. And you shall speak all these words to them, though they do not listen to you, and you shall also call to them, though they do not answer you. So you see, the prophets will continue to speak, repent. The prophets will continue to speak, come back to the ways of the Father. Whether people are going to listen to them or not, it doesn't matter. What's important is the day is going to come when the people are going to stand before the Father and they'll say, I sent you this servant and this servant and this servant and you did not listen. But you shall say to them, this is a nation that did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, their law, nor did they accept instruction. So you see, do we accept his instruction? Do we accept the instruction in the written word? Do we accept instruction of his spoken word? Do we accept instruction? Truth has perished and been cut off from their mouth. So do you see? Truth is being spoken, but people do not want truth. They want words that tickle their ears because man wants to follow their own evil wicked inclination and go their own way no one seeks the father for his counsel to say should i do this shouldn't i do this should i go this way shouldn't i go this way but we don't do that we go our own way and we do our own thing cut off your hair so now look but you shall say to them this is a nation that did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, their lord nor did they accept instruction truth was perished and has been cut off from their mouth and now he tells Jeremiah, cut off your hair and throw it away and take up a lamentation on the bare heights for Yahuwah has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. So Father will ask prophets sometimes to do strange things and whatever he's telling them to do, it's because it's a prophetic act that he's got them doing. For the children of Yahuwah, the children of Yehuda have done what is evil in my eyes, declares Yahuwah. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. And they have built their high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. Now imagine, imagine the wickedness that they have sacrificed their own children. Now, if we think of what's going on in the world right now, how many children do you think are being sacrificed right now by all these evil, wicked? You know that for the more evil to be put upon the earth, more blood needs to be shed. So the more wickedness that we see going on around the earth, more blood is being shed at this point in time, which means more sacrifices are taking place. So the enemy is very, very busy. The enemy is very, very busy taking children, all these abortions. How much blood do you think is going forth in just all these abortions? How much blood? How much sacrifices is taking place? But then people will turn around and say, but we're not sacrificing children. Really? What is an abortion? Is that not a sacrifice? And so these are the things that we just do not understand, that we are as evil we cannot turn around and say, oh, those people were very evil. We're not evil like that. Yet if you really stand and you go back and you ask the Father to show us what evil and wickedness are we doing, Father will show us clearly. And so he says, therefore, see, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when it shall no longer be called Topheth, 
or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in top, Topheth until no room is left. And so the valley of Hinnom is the valley of great bloodshed. Great bloodshed. You know that in Israel, in that valley, all you see there is crows. You don't see birds. And wherever there's no birds, it means that there's, a, there's no portal, no sound portal that has got an open heaven for the Father. And so in that valley of Hinnom Valley is really just crows that are there, very few birds. And it's the most beautiful valley. But yet at the end of the day, there is such a presence of evil that is in that place. And that is the very place where, I think it was in 2017 or 2018, when the Pope, they had a um, uh, like a tent there, and they went and they set up in this tent, they set up a place that was to bring all the religions together. And then inside there, there was some or other altar that was erected in this place. Extreme evil in that valley. So you know what? Please do not think that the religions of this world do not know what they're doing. The powers of the, of the, the powers and the rulers of the air know exactly what they're do in, doing in order to bring the people into destruction. And the corpses of this people shall be food for the birds. And the heavens for the beasts of the earth, with none to frighten them away. And in the cities of Yehuda, and in the streets of Jerusalem, I shall make to cease the voice of rejoicing, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall become a waste. And this is what it became, and this is what it shall become again. May Abba bless you all. Shalom.